Now the world don't move to the beat. I'm as big as you are, and if I want to go out this door, I'll go. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> You'll have the best set of choppers in town. <laughs> Where you go? Well, you ain't. I don't want to be around when they lay a charge on you. What charge? Assault with a wet weapon. <laughs> Ever wonder what happened to Todd Bridges, the teen sensation from Different Strokes? Hold on to your seats because his life after the spotlight is more dramatic than any sitcom. Different Strokes star Todd Bridges is speaking out from his jailhouse while awaiting trial. She said she loved me. She said she'd never lie to me. She said she'd treat me great. She said she'd always be my number one. But she never said she'd put me in county jail. Bridges fall from grace came after a long successful run in the series different strokes he admits his problem was cocaine but he says Hollywood itself was a big part of the cause 95 percent almost 98 percent I fall to Hollywood because Hollywood tends to um they rise you up to be this person and then it is wow it's gone Bridges thinks his incarceration is actually helping and producers don't realize all this trouble that I'm in it's just gonna make me more popular with the people I don't think they really realize that I think if I do a movie it's gonna make people want to go see it all they have to do is link the movie towards something like this remember the cheeky kid who delivered the sassiest line on TV what you talking about Willis what you talking about Willis <laughs> that was our boy Bridges who hit the big time on the NBC and ABC hit show but when the curtains fell on different strokes after eight nail biting season things got real and not in a good way it got moved because gary coleman's parents not gary coleman his parents wanted more money and they, he was already making the top dollar on than anybody else on any show finally you know i think what i heard was gary coleman's parents kept calling um, the president we all had the president's number to nbc kept calling kept calling kept calling and finally got so fed up to go i'm can't we're gonna cancel the show we don't want to deal with this anymore moved to abc mm -hmm. and then the same thing happened to abc you know they kept getting called and, and tortured and they didn't want to take it anymore imagine going from a national treasure at 13 to a struggling actor at 20. Tough, right? Well, Bridges didn't just struggle, he spiraled. Stay tuned as we dive into the whirlwind life of Todd Bridges. Was it a case of too much fame too soon or just a rough patch on the road to redemption? You decide. But first, let's dive into the whirlwind childhood of Todd Anthony Bridges, born May 27th, 1965, in the land of fog and dreams, San Francisco, California. This future star had more drama in his early years than a season of soap operas. I told you when I was 12 years old, I was riding my bike, I got jumped by seven white kids and I fought my way out of it because you know the thing about what they didn't realize I was a fighter I fought my way out of it and I told each and every one of them would get you back as I grow up and I got every one of them back as he spills all in his tell all 2010 autobiography killing Willis little Todd at age five wasn't playing with toy cars or watching cartoons oh no he was dreaming of big lights, red carpets, and his name in shining lights. Hollywood was calling. Todd got totally starstruck when he was just six by none other than Red Fox on Sanford and Son back in 72. Right then, he decided to dive headfirst into Hollywood, a place not exactly known for rolling out the red carpet for black actors. Talk about ambition. I always wanted to be in show business. From when I used to watch Sanford and Son on TV, I said, that's what I want to do. For, I want to be just like that, have a show just like him. And um, I was glad I was able to accomplish it. I got to not only meet him, hang out with him. He's a really great guy. I got to meet all my people that I loved growing up with, which was Lena Horne. I got to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to meet Elvis Presley. Mm -hmm. I got to meet uh, Sam ja Davis Jr. Michael Jackson? Well, Michael that's because I dated Jennifer Lewis. I was like, I'd meet Michael Jackson. Okay. All the famous people I was always around, you know, from uh, Sammy Davis Jr., I met Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, Jerry Lewis. I met all those people from being around those guys. So his family packed up from their chill spot in San Fran and plunged into the glitzy chaos of L.A. in the 70s. Talk about a wild ride. His dad, James Bridges Sr., was like a trailblazer, one of the first big-time black agents in Hollywood. And his mom, Betty A. Bridges, wasn't just any mom. She was a rising star in Hollywood. Betty, she became the go-to guru in Hollywood, coaching some serious A-listers. We're talking about her own kids, Jimmy, Verda, and of course, Todd, who were all about that star life. My mom was in the business first. My dad was a longshoreman for a bunch of years. My mom uh, trained. Actresses? Yeah. Nia Long. Right. Regina King. Right. Uh, a friend who passed away. Lamont Bentley. Mm -hmm. Shania Lathan. Yep. Yeah. She trained all those people. She trained them for, and she trained like Regina and Nia. A bunch of kids for like years and years without even getting paid. She just trained them. Wow. And she ended up managing them later on, but she didn't get paid in the beginning. She just trained them. She, you know, we had, uh, originally what would happen was if you wanted to be in show business, you had to come through my mom and my dad because there was no other way for us to get through at the time. It was very difficult. 
Chicago. Onward to 1975, our pint-sized prodigy makes his grand entrance into TV, not on a golden chariot, but with the humble appearance on Barney Miller. Talk about starting small. But at age 10, you got a role on Barney Miller. Yes. You but before in, that, yeah, I was in a movie eight with um, Henry Winkler and Sissy Spacek. And then I also did a movie at eight with Jane Alexandra. But wait, it gets better. The late 70s saw Todd zipping from one TV set to another like a mini celebrity whirlwind. He popped up in everything from the gritty roots to the wholesome little house on the prairie. And let's not forget the Waltons. It's like he was collecting TV shows like baseball cards. 1977 rolls around. And what does our young star do? He lands a gig on the ABC sitcom Fish. Sure, it's a small fry show. But hey, everyone's got to start somewhere, right? Then 1978 hits and bam, Todd Bridges becomes Willis Jackson in Different Strokes. This role wasn't just big, it was colossal, like strapping a rocket to his back and shooting straight into the starry Hollywood night. I mean, this guy is sharing screen time with none other than the pop queen herself, Janet Jackson. She rolls in as Charlie Dupre, his TV sweetheart, lighting up the set in 10 episodes from 1980 to 1984. Get this, Bridges said he's the mastermind behind casting Janet. Talk about a power move. That decision was like striking gold. It wasn't just TV land magic. Things got real. Life started copying their script. And before you know it, Todd and Janet are a thing off screen. Janet Jackson, who I'm the reason why Janet Jackson got hired because I had, she used to be on Good Times owned by the same company. She used to be walking through and I saw we seen said, man, she's good looking, you know, and I wanted to meet her. So I, guess I thought the best way to meet her really was to get her hired on the show. We all rehearsed and worked at the same stage. Okay. So I'd see her going through all the time. I'd be like, mm, mm, mm. she was good looking. So, and I met her there and all that, but I figured the best way to really get to know her was to work with her. And, okay. and I, when they were going to want to find Willis a girlfriend, I was like, ah, you got to hire Janet Jackson. Like we're going to interview said, nope. You hired Janet Jackson, they hired Janet Jackson. But hold on. As Todd navigates the choppy waters of teen stardom, little did we know behind the scenes that a storm was brewing. When Todd was just 15, right in the thick of his TV fame, he got caught up in the wild world of drugs. But get this, it wasn't just teenage rebellion. The poor guy was dealing with some serious demons from his past. Word on the street is he was dealing with trauma from childhood abuse by someone close to his family. We're talking deep dark family secrets beyond the usual Hollywood kid star drama. Little Todd, just a five-year-old, sees his dad go full beast mode on his mom. It started when I was 20 years old, when it started, because I was trying to cover up the pain and suffering from what I had saw in my family. My earliest recollection of my, of my father was him punching my mother and knocking her under a table when I was five years old. And when I told my father and mother about it, father took his side, and that just destroyed me as a child, because the guy who was supposed to protect me didn't protect me. So when I found drugs, what happened was it covered up the pain and suffering. But you never start drug drugs thinking you're gonna get addicted. It's not something that happens. Talk about a backstab, man. This betrayal hits Todd hard and sends him down the rabbit hole into drugs with his co-star Dana Plato. He's not chasing high. He's running from the messed up pain of his family. They do say like marijuana does lead to hard drugs. It does. Later on it led to cocaine, which led to crack cocaine, which led to meth. It led just to a child who was suffering inside. But here's where the drama really heats up. In 1989, Todd found himself in hot water with an attempted murder charge. He has pleaded not guilty to a charge of first degree attempted murder. He's being held without bond. He and another man, Harvey Duckett, are charged with the shooting and knifing of a third man at this address in South Central Los Angeles. Bridges says his road to prison was a straight line. The gossip was flying fast and furious. Then, in 1990, the cops busted him for carrying an illegal firearm and suspended suspected drug possession. It was all over the tabloid. Todd was the talk of the town and not in a good way. In 83, when you were 18, you got arrested for carrying a concealed weapon. Yes, Mexicans I was getting in the San Fernando Valley and threatened to kill me. Now, Hold on to your hat, because in 1992, things took a darker turn. Todd was so down and out, he even thought about ending it all in a police showdown. Can you imagine? Thankfully, a judge saw he needed help, not handcuffs, and ordered a 90-day psych evaluation. Can you believe the roller coaster life of Todd Bridges? It's like something straight out of a Hollywood script, but way more intense a once troubled star grappling with the demons of drug addiction and the haunting shadows of alleged childhood abuse. How did he manage to pull himself out of that dark pit? The turnaround? The judge's decision to not slap Bridges with a penalty for his addiction. Talk about a lucky break. But as Bridges himself said, 
what made me stop was I got sick and tired of that pain and suffering. All drugs did was compound it and make it even worse. Can you imagine the agony? But wait, there's more. The big twist in this story, faith. Yes, faith. Turning to religion, Bridges found the answers he so desperately needed. In his own words, listening to that inner voice that God is speaking through and realizing that I had choices to make. It's like a light at the end of a very dark tunnel. That's why it's blessing by God. I should be dead, you know, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah, you really should. <laughs> she I mean, says, I re- yeah, you really should. No, I, mean, I-, I called churches in San Diego, I mean, my grandmother and my mom, and told them to call all the churches you can. I called San Francisco, same thing, call all the churches. In LA too, friends, I said, call all the churches you can, tell them to pray for my son. That's what I did, and that's probably why he's still alive. She stopped enabling, but she didn't give up trying yeah, to get me help. Did Faith give him the superpower to clean up his act and set his life straight? What do you think? It's a tale of downfall and redemption with a sprinkle of divine intervention. In the swirling world of Hollywood, few stories rival the dramatic twist in terms of Todd Bridges' life. After grappling with the dark clutches of prison and addiction, this former child star made a sensational comeback, weaving his way into the glitz and glamour of television. He popped up on screens big and small, from the scandalous reality TV circuit to juicy recurring roles in hit shows like The Young and the Restless and Everybody Hates Chris. But that's not all. Further showcasing his artistic versatility, he also produced and directed Building Bridges, a biographical film chronicling his tumultuous life journey. However, the drama didn't end there. Bridges' life has been shadowed by a series of tragedies that sound straight out of a Hollywood script. As the sole survivor of the beloved Different Strokes cast, he lived through heart-wrenching losses. The gossip mills were abuzz when Dana Plato, his on-screen sister, met a tragic end in 1999. Her life was cut short at just 34 and what was deemed a suicide by the Associated Press. The plot thickened in 2010 with the shocking news of Corey Haynes' death, a close friend of Bridges who was just 38. On the Today Show, Bridges revealed his desperate yet futile attempts to save Haynes from addiction's deadly grip. This saga filled with ups and downs and shocking twists keeps Hollywood's rumor mills churning, painting a picture of a star who's seen the highest highs and the lowest lows of Hollywood. Can you believe he's the last cast standing from the iconic show of Different Strokes? In 2010, the world lost Gary Coleman, Todd's TV brother, way too young at just 42. Fast forward a bit, and in 2013, Conrad Bain, who was like a TV dad to him, left us too. The Los Angeles Times was all over that sad news. It was just Todd and Charlotte Ray holding down the fort. But in 2018, Charlotte Ray said her goodbyes at 92. That left Todd solo, y'all. He got real with the Hollywood reporter, saying it hit him hard like a ton of bricks. He's out here, the last man standing. Can you imagine what that feels like? It's got to be a crazy mix of sad and surreal. Now for some good news. Todd tied the knot in 98 with Dory, and they had this cute kiddo, Spencer, who's walking in his daddy's acting footsteps. Talk about a mini-me. The kid's been on ER, House, iCarly, and even Daddy Day Camp. But here's where it gets juicy. Todd and Dory called it quits in 2012. The reps said this is best for their futures. But get this, despite the divorce drama, it seems like they kept it classy. Todd was out there on Twitter being all reflective, thanking Dory for the good times in their son. Isn't this the mature breakup we rarely see in Hollywood? But guess who's officially off the singles list again? Drum roll, please. It's Todd Bridges. Yep, our man Todd said I do a second time around, diving headfirst into marital bliss. On September 25, 2022, he married designer Betty Jo Hershey. But here's the real tea. These two lovebirds swiped right into each other's hearts on a dating app and bam, got engaged faster than you can say speed dating. We're talking a mere six months after. Talk about zero to a hundred real quick in the romance department. And get this, Betty Jo isn't just stepping into the Bridges world solo. She's bringing her own fabulous four. Yep, 
four kiddos from her side, is joining Tide's dynamic duo, Spencer and Bo. It's like a modern-day Brady Bunch, y'all. I'm also married, you know. I got married uh, last year. And let me tell you something, man. Marriage is work. But it's a wonderful thing. But I got three, four step kids. That's a lot of work. I have my two older kids, 25, 26. And I have now 10, 12, 8, 16, and 18. I coach my 10-year-old's uh, football team. Like I coach my 25-year-old son's football team. I coach this football team. I'm the head coach of that. And I'm working and entertainment business is coming back. Hopefully when we get off this strike, we can get back and work. I'm sure by the time this airs, we'll be off strike. So we'll be all working. Uh, I'm also a streamer on Twitch. Mm. I stream on Twitch. I'm on... Um, Right. You know, I'm, I'm doing a lot of things, but it's um, I'm happy. That's where it counts. Now, let's not forget, Todd isn't just a heartthrob. He's a seasoned showbiz pro with over 40 years in the spotlight. And guess what? Talent pays, honey. By 2023, his net worth hit a jaw-dropping $3 million. Cha-ching! So how's Todd juggling his new role as a stepdad with four extra kiddos in the mix? Stay tuned, because this one's got all the makings of a juicy saga.